best practice strategies and list a few more. Um, one is value and motivation. In the Ulrich Boser book, Learn Better, he talks about the essential components of learning. And the first one is that we have to, uh, as learners, we have to find value in the thing we're learning. And without that, the learning just won't stick. And so this is a really important place for the faculty member to help the students early in the course find value and get motivation. It's a, it's a, um, a fallacy that the purpose or, or that the responsibility for motivation belongs on the student. That is not a, an appropriate approach for a teacher to take. We are in teaching because our goal is to help the students learn without us helping them learn, they'd be out on their own and then they can find their motivation. But if we're the helpers, we have to help them find motivation. So I spend a lot of time at the beginning of the course, I'm uh, even in my syllabus, day one in particular, helping the students see the value in the course and find motivation to do it. And that's a strategy. Um, another is to have the students active every day. And one of the things that I often f in the past have failed to do is to get them active. And by active, I mean talking to one another, standing up at the whiteboards, processing knowledge. And uh, I am now moving that to the beginning of the course excuse me, to the beginning of the day. So being active every day is a best practice strategy, getting them up, getting them engaged. Once you have done some small activity, maybe even you know, somewhere on the order of 10 to 15 minutes maximum, then have them sit down and their brains are much more ready to engage in the rest of the material. Another really good best practice strategy is something that I call time scaffolding. In time scaffolding, you help the students um, predict how much time in minutes they should spend on all of the activities between one class and the next class. Now, ideally, this is going to be somewhere between 120 and 150 minutes between classes, so they have to watch videos. And normally my videos per class are somewhere, in, there's usually two of them around 10 minutes. In this class, there are up to three of them. So in this class, there's you know 30 to 40 minutes. And uh, then they have to do uh, reflections. And some days they have reflections, some days they don't. So I'll just write this list on the whiteboard. Um, you know, 15 minutes to do a reflection, uh, to do a define, you know, 15 minutes to do a define, and then some other, uh, whatever the other activities that they should be doing, working on their DLA. And when this, when this list is done, having it set equal to the number of minutes that you would like them to spend. So time scaffolding is a good thing to uh, show the students where they should be spending their time, approximately how much time each thing should do. In a sense, this time scaffolding is another way of giving feedback. Another uh, good practice strategy is every day in class, list the class activities on the board. I actually do it in a handout that I call a visual organizer. When students come in and they sit down and they can see on the board um, what what the different things that are going to be done this hour are, you know, for example, um, maybe I'll have them do their activity for the day will be to 
practice describing principles. And the two in pairs, they'll go up to the whiteboards and they'll practice. Then after that, I'm going to return homework, give feedback, And then another really good best practice is to have a question and answer session every day to beg them to ask questions as they are trying to build um, their own model of understanding. And then after, after each of these things, maybe there's a DLA discussion on a particular day. And then perhaps you want to do a a 10 minute lecture. Um, I d am no longer doing 10 minute lectures because they're in my videos. But whatever the, the list of activities is, when that's sitting in front of the students and they can chart their way through the day, and you'll watch me do it like in seminar class. As soon as I finish one of these activities, I check it off. And uh, this is, this. there's uh, some good research behind the value of doing that. Another best practice strategy is frequent quizzing. This is pretty new in my repertoire. I actually have, in my last class, gave a short quiz every day. Um, it forces the students to practice recalling the information. In Bozer's book, he shows something called the forgetting curve. And every time a student is forced to uh, r recall information or practice their retention, it adds to the stickiness and the length of the learning. So I'm, I'm now doing three to five minute quizzes every day on, you know, what is, uh, draw a picture that would show what fluid pressure is. And give them three to five minutes to do it, or write down a word definition of the second law of thermodynamics and give them some time to do that. So what we're doing is scaffolding their retention when we do frequent quizzing. A Metacron is a best practice. I did this last block for the first time. Uh, what I had the students do is keep uh, time track of every activity they did during the learning of the course. And then once they did that, I found that most students spent somewhere in that 40 to 50 hour range, but um, the seventh reflection in my reflection assignment is an analysis of that metaphor. Another best practice is for the students to maintain a uh, organized binder. I'll actually have them bring their binder to class once in a while, maybe twice during the block, to show me that they have a three ring binder, that in that binder they've got a section for their reflections, a section for their principal worksheets, where their Metacron is, where they've been taking notes, and so on. All right, well, that is the second video, and it's a bunch of different best practice strategies that you can feel free to uh, 